So what are you doing? So I'm getting um, organic apples to make yeast uh, starter for uh, making cider. So they've got to be organic so that they haven't had uh, pesticides on them to kill all the natural yeast. So yeast is a, uh, a fungus basically that you just find um, on apple skin. So it's the apple skin that's important. So I'm just going to get one of each because I want to get several starters going. And um, you don't know really what you're going to get because you don't know where the apples come from. And it's all down to what's in the air and what's in the apples. So the trick is to just, you've got to get a few going and get them starting and to see how well they turn out. Cool. So, nice red one there. I've no idea really what's going to work well and what isn't. I've done this before and um, found that two of the same apples produce a different result. A different odd. result. Yeah, which is a bit odd. So, one, two, three, four. So we'll take those back and we'll get them going. And it's all in the apple peel. So what I'm going to do, use both of these and we'll just see what works. Uh, and that's really kind of, if you're making hard cider, I think that's the attitude you need to approach it with, which is treat it as an experiment. And I've not measured anything, I've just kind of poured it in there roughly, which is kind of cool, and we'll just see which one works best. So I'm going to try not to get these mixed up. So these two are this one, and then I'm going to pour this into these two. Now the thing that's completely non-intuitive about the whole thing is you sterilise everything. So you wash the bottles out, and uh, the funnel, and my knife, and everything that I'm using in the counter. And I made sure my hands were clean and didn't have any soap on them. Um, but you don't wash the apples. <laughs> and that's not intuitive, because if you wash the apples, you wash the fungus off, which then you're not having any yeast on there. So you actually want the fungus on the apple peel. And literally, all, all you do is just kind of peel it and uh, pop it in there. And it's uh, just about as complicated as that. So nothing too difficult. You don't want much, you know, just literally you want the peel. It's not the apple itself that you're trying to put in there. All you're trying to do is you've got apple juice and all you're doing is you're capturing the fungus which is yeast, um, which is on the apple. The challenge is you can end up with bacteria on there and if there's too much bacteria, the bacteria can grow. If there's bad bits in the apple, you don't want to put that in there. So just as long as the apple is good, um, you know, don't put the bruised bits in, so just select that out and just shove it all in there like this. So a uh, very easy process. Yeah, so this, um, so this is a... Uh, Kirk, this, these two are the Kirkland apple juice. This one's yellow and this one's red. And I've written that on there so I know which, or green and red, so I know which is which. You might not be able to tell after it's fermented what the original colour was. Um, and put date, which is the 8th of April. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take all four of these and put them somewhere to get the yeast to work. So let's take them and put them in the right place now. So the place I use is this little place down here, which is under, this is in the mud room, and this is under the sink here. And the reason I chose this place is because, number one, you don't want to get too much light on them, you don't want them to get any sunlight, certainly, that'll kill the yeast. But this has a heating vent under here, and this cupboard gets really warm. It's currently sitting at 71 degrees. Because it gets so warm, it'll cause the uh, fermentation process to start and act much more rapidly. So we'll come back to these and we'll look at these every day and see how long it takes for them to start fermenting. Now, the, the thing to keep testing, and we're going to sort of know what they feel like to start with, is how squidgy they are. So the tops are on tight and they're quite, as you can probably see from here, there's no, there's no bubbling, there's no froth, and they're very squidgy. So we'll come back and look at this and see what's happened uh, each day. So, it's uh, the second day now. Let's see how the uh, yeast starter is going. So it's only been two days. And uh, let's see if we've uh, got anything happening here. So here's the stuff in here. So um, apart from a bit of condensation, there's not anything happening there at all. And you can see the peel is actually starting to drop from the top. When we first put it in, it was all at the top and it's starting to drop. So which one is that? Uh, well, I don't is that know. the treetop or is that the treetop? Ah. And that's a good point because it maybe it makes a difference. Ah, okay. Now that's interesting. 
So already oh, look, yeah. the Kirkland, Bubbles. Um, which is the this is this was the hundred percent apple juice, not from concentrate. That one's going. The squidgy. And you can see, can you see the yeah, foam? You can see the white foamy. See, yeah, it's starting to foam, and it's uh, quite hard, actually. It's still a bit squidgy, but it's a harder. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, well, it's quite hard. Um. I mean, it will get harder than that. Um, and if I compare that to this other one, put them both out on the counter. Maybe it'd be easy. You can see side by side. Yeah. And it's lighter okay. up here too. So there you go. There's the difference between the two. So Nothing on that one. This squidgy. One is this is the 100% apple juice from Kirkland, Costco, Kirkland brand Costco, and this is that one. So here's the see the foam, yeah. Yeah. So condensation in both. Here's the here's the test, and this is what you do periodically. So you can't smell that, but I can smell that, and trust me, that smelled good. Now you know one of the tests with this is when you just release some of the pressure, and you want to release the pressure every day. And when you release that pressure, you can smell the air coming out of there, and you will know from the smell whether it's working well or not. Because when it's not working well, the smell is like, oh. But when it's uh, working well, it's a very nice yeasty, appley smell. You can really smell the apples. So let's just check the others are um, also. Oh, well, now that's interesting. This one's not going as much. It's going a bit though, isn't it? Can no, I see a bit on the no, top there? Not at all. So this one's going, so this is the same juice. So two lots of Kirkland there. And it is going a little bit. It's slightly tight, but not nearly as tight as that one. This one's not going, and this one's not going. So we've got a variance based on the apple juice and the apple. This is why it's a good idea to do several, because sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And all these are different variables. So. We'll um, leave, put these back in the cupboard and we'll check them tomorrow, which is every day. Just to reiterate though, the Kirkland is 100% apple juice and the treetop is reconstituted. It's apple concentrate, concentrate with and water. water. Added. Right. So it's, um, we think really this has got a lot more sugar in it. Actually, it shouldn't make a difference because you only really need to, um, to, me to make the um, fermentation process start working you only really need to uh, have sugar water, that would work, because that's all that's happening is that the um, yeast on the apple peel is reacting with the sugar to ferment. You're, we're using apple juice to maintain the nice taste uh, associated with it, so mm. it should still, there's no reason why this wouldn't work. So it's an interesting experiment and we've got a difference between them already. Okay, so it's uh, day five now, so we're going to see what progress uh, our yeast starters have uh, made. Let's have a look, see what we got. Here's the first one. So, uh, this is quite tight. It's not squidgy at all. So let's have a little smell, see what that smells like. Mm, it smells medium. I can't say it smells great, but all I did is release enough pressure, not letting air in there, but just leave, leave enough pressure so that it can continue to work. And that's a, a bit squidgy now, so that one's good. What one is that? That the treetop? So or is that this the... is Kirkland. Uh -huh. Let's do the other Kirkland. Obviously it's... Um... So both of them, so clearly um, this one's working and this one is working now. So it's taken about five days. And um, what happens is uh, the peel starts out on the top and then falls to the bottom. And then as it starts to ferment, it goes back to the top, strangely. So you can kind of see it's halfway through. Some of the peel is on the bottom. So basically that one is just starting to go. Let's see what this one is like. This one is this one is like rock. I can't put a dent in it. It's like Yeah, that's that's like it's uh, made of rigid plastic. It's just I'm not able to bend it even fractionally. So I definitely need to release the pressure on this one. So let's see what this one smells like. <laughs> 